curious, uh, what what is the learning curve for for a rookie entering the NFL, rookie safety entering the NFL? As far as you know, they say tight end and wide receiver, they're hard to go from one level to another. Is it pretty steep going from college to the NFL for a safety? I think it really depends on what you're asking of that player. Um, but uh, there's so many things when you transition to be a rookie in the NFL that you know you have to really be able to understand. And it goes sometimes, a lot of the times, really beyond the field. You know, how to be a professional, how to uh, manage your time well, how to study uh, outside of the building. Because there's only so many hours that we have an opportunity to, to meet with them. And so it's learning how to be a pro um, is really the biggest learning curve for these guys, not to mention all the things that we require them to do as coaches in order to be able to execute. So um, regardless of really the position, you know, I think that there's a, you know, there's a learning curve that they naturally go through their rookie year, and then they kind of figure out what really works for them. You know, again, talking about like nutrition or um, you know, time management, how they take care of their bodies. I mean, there's so many things that are different um, than being a college student and being a professional athlete that those guys have to learn, regardless of what we tell them as coaches. And, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like this time of year is one of those examples of how to be a pro, not a college student, because you know, it's tough. The championship week the season's wrapping up in college, mm -hmm. but you guys got like six more weeks left mm -hmm. here. Is this a critical moment for, for rookies in that development of becoming a professional? Yeah, I think with with all of that, you know, and, and obviously the out, you know, the obviously distractions from the holiday season and family and, and stuff like that, and so you know, this is around that time where guys usually kind of wrap their seasons up, at least you know, usually. But you know, there's a lot of ball to be played, um, and this is a very significant time of the year. So uh, I think you know, again, if we can just continue to focus on the day-to-day -day improvement, then you can eliminate all of the distractions because you're focused on. Just improving on a day to day, and you know, time just kind of just goes because you're so focused on the task at hand. It feels like what you guys do with your safety, like the really cool thing you guys do with your safety, is, is all of them are so versatile that they can rush the passer or they can drop back in coverage. Is that maybe a, a recent trend? Has that always been the case with just the safety position, getting guys who can who can do both instead of just being kind of like a ball hawk? I think. If you can have versatility amongst your players, I think that's the, the the more desirable thing that you want. I think, you know, Coach Flores preaches that as far as uh, being able to be multiple and, and guys having versatility. Whether you're talking about safety or outside linebacker or really anybody, um, it allows you to just do a little bit more defensively. And so, um, the game is about space now, and so you're going to have to have safeties who have athleticism, have to have the range to be able to play in space and hopefully be able to defend the deep ball um, and also make tackles near the line of scrimmage. And so. We have the fortunate ability to have some guys that can do that. And so we'll always try to cater our game plan to, to highlight their skill sets and stop the offenses that we need to stop. Pound for pound, you think safeties are probably the best athletes on the field? See, I'm not going to get in all of that. I'm not going to get <laughs> in all of that. Like they got to be, be fast enough to keep up with receivers. You got to be tough enough to bring down running backs and tight ends. You got to be. Every position has the things that they got to do in order to execute. And so there's a lot that is required for, for us as safeties to, to, to do our job and really to get everybody else aligned to do theirs. Um, I'm not going to say our situation is a little bit harder than anybody else's. Um, it's just one of the 11 piece puzzles on defense. That we got to just make sure fits. Thanks. Yep. What's up, Janae? Good to see you. How we doing? I, I wrote a profile about Holland. I spoke to a few people you probably crossed paths with. Mm -hmm. The Boise State head coach, mm -hmm. Avalos. Yeah, I played with Andy. Cal, linebacker, Haywood. Yep. Linebacker's coach, Haywood. Mm -hmm. um, you know Marcel Yates, too? Yeah, Marcel Yates was my DB, DB coach in college. Oh, he was your coach? Okay. Yeah. Cool, nice guy. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. Anyway, um, on Javon, who I'm, I'm, I'm writing about the rookies as a collective group this week. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, is there a, a moment since, is there any moment, whether it's on the practice field, in the game, during your film study, where you first thought, wow, that's that's pretty good. I, I, think, I think we might have something really good here. Um, I don't know if it was so much a moment. You know, I'm fortunate, like I said before, I'm fortunate enough to have known Javon for a very long time. Uh, just recruiting him in high school. And so you, you kind of knew from the intangibles that he had uh, just as a communicator, as a, you know, as a person um, with his personality and obviously his athletic skill set that, you know, he, he could do some special things um, 
if he got into the right situation. So uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to have him. And so I, I don't necessarily uh, see a moment, but you know, is again, we're just focused on the improvement. And he's continued to improve on a week-to-week -week basis, and we have to just continue to focus on that. And when those opportunities for us to make plays uh, come into the game, we just have to take advantage of them. Uh, has anything surprised you about what he's bringing, or what 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 the Dolphins got? You know what I mean? Especially the young ones. No, I think the only thing that would probably be very surprising is just. His, his professionalism now that I see him on a day to day. Again, I, I didn't I didn't coach him in college. I wasn't around him um, other than the, the the opportunity I had to recruit him. But just to see how he acts as a as a young professional, um, I think that's probably one of the more uh, pleasant surprises. Where you know you see a guy who doesn't necessarily operate as a rookie in regards to how he's diligent about his preparation. Going off that real quick, just like maybe not surprised, but. Or of course, you're happy yeah. for anyone's success who practices and, 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 and prepares, and, and when the opportunity presents itself, they, they take advantage of them and they make the plays um, that they're in positions to make. Um, you know, we're obviously happy about that, but uh, you know, our focus is just to continue to improve. You know, luckily, you know, when we play those games, when you have a performance or when you make a play, you know, you get a chance to maybe look at some of the things that the opportunities that you left out there or the things that can be a lot better. And so we just continue to focus on that and just try to string good days together and continue to just improve off our last performance. So, uh, of course, you're happy for his early success. Um, am I satisfied? Absolutely not. I don't think we'll ever be satisfied with where we are because we know that we can improve. And so with that keep being our main focus, um, it keeps us driven. It keeps us uh, going in the direction that we want to go, and hopefully that leads to uh, bigger opportunities to make bigger plays. I don't know what Javon ran coming out of college, whether because there was no combine, right? So it would be pro day. But I read, and I don't know, I, think I wasn't following closely, that the reason he wasn't uh, like a top 20 pick is that he didn't necessarily have the fastest 40 time or wasn't necessarily one of the fastest defensive backs in the class. I don't know if that's true, but his, his foot speed and his ability to cover ground, like we saw in that interception in the corner of the end zone, and, and I think a, a pass breakup, several pass breakups and interceptions in the last four games. What have you noticed about his um, pure speed and how his knowledge of the game and maybe instincts uh, help him play even faster? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Well, I think play yeah. speed is, is a huge part of you know anybody's success, yeah. whether or not they clock a fast 40 or not. You know, And a lot of that has to do with uh, diagnosing what you see and reacting to what you see um, and playing and at a high level and believing. And so no matter what you clock, a lot of the times guys who clock fast play slow and, and, and vice versa. So it really comes down to understanding your responsibility, understanding where your keys are, understanding how you need to react, and then being able to believe in what you see and, and, and make a play, you know, and being able to uh, play fast, as we all like to do um, and we all need to do. But it all comes down to understanding what to do and how to get it done. From the time that I've seen him in high school, he looks to have uh, a great time playing the game with his teammates. And um, just because the logos change and the levels change, it doesn't seem like he's changed at all. He's still having fun.